Hello everybody, the Gwitty Sphere. Today I'm going to show you how to solve the Rubik's Cube. So you may have tried to solve one of these before and found that was impossible. And so the main reason for that is you probably did not know the method for doing it. There's a very specific method of solving it. And if you do not know that method, it's basically impossible to do it. So this method that I'm going to show you today has seven steps, and each of those have a couple of different cases. So to follow this method, all you have to do is, once you get to the next step, by finishing the previous step, you look at the cube and figure out which case you have. There's a couple of cases for each step. And so now, let's say we have this piece and it needs to go to the right. That's one case. And for that case, there's one algorithm. So you do that set of moves, and the piece will go where you want it to. And by completing each of the seven steps by first examining the case and then doing the appropriate algorithm for that case, you can effectively solve the cube in no time at all. In fact, it's pretty easy to get under a minute using this method. And so probably the hardest part of this method for you is going to be to memorize the algorithms. And so there's quite a few algorithms that you need to memorize and you need to memorize what they do and when you need to use them. And so this is what I used when I first learned how to solve a cube. These are all the algorithms, and I just wrote it down in a way that made sense to me. And I really recommend writing it down yourself instead of just like printing something out, because it really does help you to remember it. Okay, so let's get started. So first I will shrink the screen down a little bit, and you see on either side, these are the steps that you're going to have to follow to solve the cube. And so first I recommend just watching through it and maybe writing them down. And if you ever get stuck, like you forget a step or you don't really understand it, just click back on one of those links, leave a comment below, and I'll get back to you and just watch the video again until you understand it. And so I guess this would be a good time to go over notation. So I will get another cube. And so what notation is, is it's basically a way of representing moves. So let's say we are holding the cube like this. This would be an R move, which stands for right. This would be an L move, which stands for left. This would be a U move, which stands for up. This would be a D move, which stands for down. This would be an F move, which stands for front, and this would be a B move, which stands for back. And so if you're turning aside clockwise, you will just see that letter. So an R move would be like this. You see, you're turning the right side clockwise. A U move would be like this, an L move would be like this, a D move would be like this, an F move would be like this, and a B move, you may have to turn the cube around a little bit, would be like this. Just make sure to put it back into the original position. Now, if you want to turn aside counterclockwise, what you would do is you'd put a little dash next to the letter, which uh, is called prime. And so this would be U prime, or counterclockwise U move. This would be F prime. This would be R prime. This would be D prime, etc. And then finally, if you want to move aside twice, you just put a little 2 next to the letter. And so an F2 would be like this. It actually doesn't matter if you turn it like this or like this. It'll actually get to the same result. Because if you see, if we have this as the starting position, and we do it this way, it'll look the same as if you did it the other way. So this is R2, this is U2, this is B2, this is L2, etc. And so by stringing these moves together, you can create an algorithm. So let's say our algorithm is R, F prime, D2. You would do it like this. R, F prime, D2. I just kind of did that tricky, but you can just do it like that. So the first step is going to be to get a white cross. We're just going to start with white because it's easiest that way. And so these are edges right here, these four things. There's actually 12 of them on the cube. And you're going to line up these four edges with their centers. You're going to have to actually get it lined up with this white center in the center and their respective color center that's on the other side of the piece. Don't think of this as two different stickers. Think of it as one piece. And also these are the corner pieces, and of course these are the centers. And so this step can be confusing for some people because there's actually no cases, which means no algorithms. So that can be a good or a bad thing. It can be bad because it's a little bit hard to get used to. So we'll start with having the white center on top. The centers actually never move. They just rotate in place. And if you have any white pieces already lined up, go ahead and line that up with their center. Because again, we're going to have to line each of these centers up. And so this piece is in its place, it is in between its two centers, and we can just leave it there. And so now we can get the other pieces back up onto the top. And so you may see like a piece right here, and you can see we can move that up right there. 
but that's actually not correct because we have to line it up with both of its centers, both the white one and the other one. So we can bring that back down to the bottom. An easy thing to do if it's not in the right place is to bring it to the bottom like that, bring it next to the center that it needs to be next to, and then bring it back up to the top. That way it'll be between the two centers that it needs to be between. Now we can find the next piece here, this one, and we may see you can bring it up like that, but it won't, won't be in the correct place. And so what you can do is bring this down by another center, and maybe bring it to the bottom. Just kind of play around with the pieces until you can find them and put them in the right spot. So you see here, we can line it up and put it on top. So if you can get the piece down in the bottom layer like this, it's easy to just line it up with its center and bring it up. And finally, for the last one, it may be a little bit more difficult because it may be like between one of these pieces. And so what I can do is bring this piece out of place, move it over to a place that's more convenient, and bring it back into place. And then from here, you see that that's not lined up correctly. And so what I can do is I can bring it to another piece that's already solved, bring it and line it up. I may, I did actually mess that up with, by doing that, but I can then bring it up there and bring that piece back. And so this step definitely is going to be kind of confusing for you because it's just intuitive. You just kind of get the pieces into their correct places by messing around with them a little bit. Just make sure you don't mess up the pieces that you already have in by putting the next ones in. And so if you have to move one out of its place, make sure to put it back when you're done. So now for step two. The goal of this step is to get a complete white layer. So you see the whole white layer will be solved. If you have something more like this, that is not solving the white layer. It may look like you have the white side solved, but if you actually look at it, these two pieces need to be switched. So you need to make sure that the whole white layer is being solved. This is the first step that's going to require algorithms, and it's actually going to only require one very short algorithm that's going to be repeated a bunch of times. So I'll put that algorithm up there. It's R prime D prime R D. So if we get our notation cube back out, we can see that would be like this. R prime D prime R D. So that's the first algorithm you need to memorize, and it's a pretty simple one, and it can be used in multiple different ways on the cube. And so of course we'll be starting off with our white cross, so you see we have it right here, and this is the last good time to check and make sure that we have all these edges lined up. And so in my case, we do. And so you'll use this algorithm to get these corners on the bottom layer up to the top layer. And so we'll do that by holding the cross at the top, and then turning the bottom layer. This bottom layer can be turned freely. And so the first part of this step is finding a corner piece that needs to go in one of these slots. And so we have four empty slots that corners need to go into. And so we'll find a corner on the bottom layer. This bottom layer can be turned freely. Let's just say this one. It has to have white on it because that means it'll go on the top where we want it. And so this one has white, uh, blue, and red. And you see we have the white blue and red slot right here. And so we need to put the blue, white, and red corner in the blue, white, and red slot. And so we can do that by holding it directly beneath the slot that it needs to go into and doing the algorithm. R prime, D prime, R, D. Now you see it didn't line it up correctly. And so what we can do is just continue doing the algorithm. R prime, D prime, R, D. R prime, D prime, R, D, until it gets lined up. So, R prime, D prime, R, D, R prime, D prime, R, D. And there we go, now it is lined up in the correct way. And so now what we're gonna do is find another piece on the bottom layer, so this one will work, and line it up beneath the slot that it needs to go into. So you see these three colors match with these three colors. And so we'll put it in. R prime, D prime, R, D, R prime, D prime, R, D, that's not the right one, so we can keep going. R prime, D prime, R, D. Okay, so the first kind of weird case that you can get is when you have the piece in its correct slot, but it's not oriented correctly. And so you may have noticed, while we were getting this first piece in, it actually rotated itself around a couple times. And so by using logic, you can figure out if you just do the algorithm on this piece when it's already in its slot, couple times, you can get it to be rotated correctly. And so if a piece is rotated in its slot incorrectly, just do the algorithm a couple times, and it will be rotated correctly. 
Now let's say you're doing that and you can't find any more white corner pieces on the bottom layer. Now that's okay, that just means that they're all already in their slots, but they may not be in the correct place. You see here, these colors do not match up with these colors on the outside, and so what we have to do is take it out and then put it in its correct spot. And so to take a piece out of a slot, you just do the algorithm once. R from D prime RD, and there we go, we got it out. And now we can move it underneath its correct slot and put it in with that algorithm, just like that. And now we can finally find the last piece, put it in its slot, just like that. And so now for the third step. The goal of this step is to have the whole first two layers, or F2L, complete. And so you already have the first layer complete, now you just have to solve the second layer. And so this step is going to have two cases, and you're going to have to have an algorithm for each of those. And you're just going to repeat those cases in different ways until you get the second layer complete. So what you're going to do is you're going to find an edge piece. Any edge piece will do, and then you're going to check if it goes in the second layer. An easy way to check if it goes in the second layer is to see if it has yellow on it. And so you see this piece does not have yellow on it, and that means it goes in the second layer. And so we'll move it around until we get this color lined up with its center. So you see that's not lined up, that's not lined up, but that is lined up. So we move it around until we get it lined up, you see it's not in the right place yet, but if we move it either this direction or this direction, it will be in the right place. So you see in this case, we have to move it this direction, and it will be in its correct spot. And so this is the first case. You're going to have a simple algorithm to solve this case. Hold it like this, where it needs to go into the right, and do u r u prime r prime u prime f prime u f. So that's the first algorithm that you need to memorize, and it puts the piece up here into the slot down here. And so you see, we have this first slot solved. And so now we can find another edge piece. Let's just say this one. But you see this one has yellow on it, so it's no good. Let's go around to the next one. This one does not have yellow on it, so it can be used. It goes in the second layer. And so we'll turn it around until the front color lines up. And you see it lines up there. It's orange again. And so what you do is, this time, is you figure out which way it needs to go. And in this case, it needs to go to the left. And so if it needs to go to the left, you do another algorithm. U prime, L prime, U, L, U, F, U prime, F prime. And you see we got that piece in too. And so from here, we can just keep going around the cube and putting the edge pieces in the correct spots. So you see this piece does not belong, it has yellow on it. This piece has yellow on it too. This piece will work though. So we can move it around until we get the front color lined up. You see we have uh, red lined up this time. And you do the respective algorithm to get it in its spot. And so in this case it needs to go to the right. So you do the right algorithm. And there we go. Okay, now let's say you're looking around the top layer and this piece has yellow on it, this piece has yellow on it, this piece has yellow on it, and this piece has yellow on it. So they all have yellow on it. And so that means that the pieces are already in their slots, but they may not be in the right slots. And so what you need to do is you're going to have to take one of these pieces out of their slots and then put it into its correct slot. And to put a piece, or take a piece out of a slot, you're going to replace it with another piece. And so we're just going to replace it with one of the pieces on the top layer. It doesn't matter which one, let's just do this one. And we're going to put this piece into the right spot, which will force this piece out. So we'll use our right algorithm to get that in, just like that. And now you see it's up on the top layer. And from here we can use the left algorithm to put in it, in it, it its correct spot. There we go. And then we can put this piece finally in its correct spot. And then finally, here's one more case. We have a piece in its correct spot, but it is turned incorrectly. And so in this case, we can do the left algorithm and get it out. Just like that. And then move it around, line it up, and do our left algorithm again to put it back in. Like that. And so you see, simply with those two algorithms, we have completed our third step and gotten our second layer. Okay, now at this point, the last four steps are to get the top layer. And so this is hard because you have to retain what you have at the bottom, the first two layers, 
while fixing what you have at the top, because this is incorrect. And so for the first step, there's going to be three different cases. So what we're going to look at is this center and the four surrounding edges. And so you see, let's just ignore these corners and just look at these five pieces. And so what you'll find is you'll either have a dot, an L shape like this, a line, or a completed cross like this. This is going to be the goal of this step, is to just get a yellow cross on top, like we did on the bottom. And so for this case, there's only going to be one algorithm. Actually, for the rest of the cases, there's only one algorithm each. And so for the dot case, you're going to have to repeat that one algorithm three times. For the L case, you're going to have to repeat that two times. And for the line case, you only have to do it once. And so, once we have the dot right here, we're going to do that algorithm once. This is the algorithm. It is F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime. Like that. And now you see we have the L case. And now from the L case, we can align it like this. You have to make sure that it is aligned correctly. It has to be in the top and to the left, the two pieces. So you have the L like this. And from there, we can do the algorithm again. So F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime. And there we go. Now we have the line case. And so this, from here, we can have it aligned like this or like this. It doesn't really matter. And then we do that case, that algorithm, one more time. If you started with, say, the line case, then you can only do it once. You only have to do it once. And so we do F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime. And we have the cross on top. The key thing to remember is you have to line it up correctly. And so if you have the line like this, or maybe the L like this, or like this, or like this, it won't line up correctly, and you actually end up going backwards. So just make sure it's lined up like I showed you how to do it, right there, and you will have it correct. Now the next step's goal may not look very different from the previous step. So you see we'll have the cross, but we'll also have these edges lined up. If you do an algorithm like this, you see they may not all be lined up. See, these ones are wrong. So this is pretty similar to how you lined up the edge pieces when you were making the white cross initially, except you did all that in one step. This time it's going to be a little bit more complicated, so we're splitting it up into two steps. And so we're actually going to be finishing the yellow cross in this step. So again, there's going to be one algorithm for this case and two different cases. And so the first case looks kind of like this. You see, if we look around the cube, we have one piece that's lined up. But we're actually going to want to have two pieces lined up. So what you can do is just turn the top layer any way you want to, and that won't mess up what you have already. And then we can look around the cube again. No, no pieces are lined up this time, so we turn it again. One piece is lined up, but that's not good enough. But finally, we have these two pieces lined up. And so once you have these two pieces, we can get on with the algorithm. And so what you do is you're going to want to hold the two pieces on the top and on the right. So kind of back and right. And then we're going to do this algorithm. And so this algorithm is commonly called soon. And it's just like this. R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime. So you see I kind of did some fancy finger tricks like that. But you can just do however you need to turn it. Okay, now there's one other case for this step. This one's going to be a little bit more rare. And this is where you have these two pieces lined up, but they're opposite. And so you can't line them up on the top and on the right because that's just not how opposite pieces work. And so what you need to do to fix this is to hold one in the back and one in the front. Do that algorithm once. There we go. And then you see now we have them two next to each other. And then do that algorithm one more time. And there we go. We are done with this step. Okay, and now for the sixth and second to last step. The goal of this step is to get all of the corner pieces in their correct places. You don't have to get them lined up. They don't have to be like that to be cheating. Um, you just have to get them in the correct spots. So you see, these colors are the same as these colors. These colors are the same as these. These, these, and these, and these. So they don't have to be lined up. Some of them may be lined up when you're done, but they just can be like this. You just need to make sure that they're in the right spot. So this step is going to have one algorithm, and you're going to repeat that algorithm up to three times. And so first, you're going to look at one piece and see if it's in the right spot. This piece is not. This piece is not. This piece is not. But this piece is. And so it's going to be pretty likely that you have at least one. And so if you have one, you're going to hold it on the right like this and do this algorithm. U, R, 
u prime l prime u r prime u prime l just like that and then you see that should either move the pieces around a little bit or get them all in the right spot and so in this case they're not in the right spot yet and so you're going to do that one more time u r u prime l prime u r prime u prime l and now they are all in the correct spot and so let's say you look around the cube to begin with and none of them are in the right spot and so that's fine you just choose a piece anyone will do do that algorithm once figure out where one of them is that's solved because at least one of them will be solved after doing that once there we go and now all of them are in place so you never have to do that algorithm more than three times that's a mistake I made a lot when I was first beginning sometimes I would miss a piece and that's fine, just do it until you have all the pieces lined up like that. Okay, now this is the very last step. The goal of this step is to have the cube solved. And so in this step, you're just going to be moving the top layer and rotating each of these pieces that needs to be rotated. And you're going to use the algorithm from the second step. And so that algorithm again is R prime D prime R D. And so what you're going to do is you're going to hold a piece that needs to be rotated on the right like this, and then do that algorithm until it is in the right spot. Okay, you see I did that a couple times and now it's in the right spot. We just did R prime G prime R D twice. And now what we're going to do, not rotate the whole cube because you see it's a little bit messed up around here. And then just turn the top layer until you have another piece that's not lined up. And so you're not going to want to turn the whole cube, just turn the top layer until you have the next wrong piece. There we go, that piece is lined up. And then finally this piece. And there we go. And it will always end up being solved on the bottom once you have all the pieces lined up. And then you see we can just turn the top layer and we have successfully solved a Rubik's Cube. And so there's a couple different ways you can do that last step. You can have up to all four of them mixed up or you can have as few as just two. But either way, you just do the algorithm a couple times on each of them. Sometimes you have to do it a couple more times on one then on another. You see that one we had to do it four times. It just depends on which way it's oriented. And we just move the last layer back and we have it solved. So I really hope this video helped you. It was quite a long video and it took a long time to make. And so if you like this video, if you appreciated it, leave a like down below if it helped you to solve a cube for your first time. Leave a like. It really helps this video be seen and uh, I really just spent a lot of time on this video. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments below. If there's anything that you need help with, leave that in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, leave a suggestion down in the comments for a future video like this. Yeah, maybe a basic tutorial on the 2x2 or something. Uh, but yeah, I'll take those into consideration. And uh, if you want to be notified when a future video like this comes out, be sure to subscribe down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!